I'm not sure what the right answer is on illegal immigration. On the one hand, God, in the Bible, commanded Joseph and Mary to flee to Egypt to save Jesus. If entering another country were wrong, God wouldn't have commanded it. On the other hand, I can see where it might be smart public policy to stop and quarantine immigrants to test for communicable diseases, as we used to do at Ellis Island, so as to not infect the general population. Whatever, I put this video together simply to show the contrast between what we thought about illegal immigration in the 50s and what we think about it today. The following excerpts are from a movie made in 1953 about one illegal immigrant. It's only a movie, and so a lot of things, like cops shooting at a fleeing illegal, are over the top. Still, the movie offers some interesting insights. The movie begins by focusing on a stowaway from Europe. He had been locked up on the ship awaiting an immigration hearing, although it quickly became more a case about seeking asylum where some of the facts were in dispute. Nevertheless, it's interesting to see how strict everyone is about observing the law. But first, as an aside, note that our guy had already taught himself English. Name? Peter Kuban. You speak English? Yes. Like my grandparents on both sides, he wanted to be an American. This isn't like today where illegals don't want to assimilate. Back to the story. We have no choice. Our job is to enforce the law. Today, our president tells agents to ignore the law. We can't let you off this ship. Back then, they took immigration law so seriously that they won't even let our guy off the ship. But today, we have cities who proudly thumb their noses at the law. Back then, being an illegal was so newsworthy, it made front page news. It still makes front page news today, but for different reasons. Kuban, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. You stowed away. You're here illegally. But we can't let you in. The law is exact. We have to send you back. He's going to be deported immediately. No sight and release and a broken promise to show up later, as today. Deportation was so serious and certain back then that he jumped ship. And now that he's entered the U.S. illegally, the cops chase him. The full force of the U.S. government comes down on the guy. It's the first one ever jumped ship on us. They go as far as setting up a dragnet in New York City with APBs and all. 2nd Street and uh, 47th from 8th Avenue to 5th. You take this, Kylie. Yes, sir. If they don't find him by 7 that evening, he formally becomes a criminal, and he will never be able to get back into the U.S. again. What happens if you don't get him back by 7? At your sailing time? Yes. Well, he becomes a fugitive and a criminal. After that, he'll never be able to get into this country at all. Well, let's get going. They meant it. It's not like today where we have a revolving door at the border. In the end, since this was more a case of seeking asylum, a former soldier vouches for the guy, and he's given permission to stay in the U.S. Frankly, if I were king, I wouldn't have a problem if you came to this country as long as you didn't commit crime. I wouldn't give you free food, and I wouldn't give you a free cell phone, but I would execute you for murder, rape, or kidnapping, and I would have you flogged for stealing. So if you were a bad guy or lazy, you might not want to immigrate to my country if I were king. Anyway, it's interesting to see how America has changed in 60 years.